So now let's consider number 3 as we continue with our calculations of empirical formula. So an, an experiment shows that 32 gram of sulfur combined with 32 gram of oxygen to form the compound sulfur dioxide. What is its empirical formula? So what we do is uh, I open this pen presenter and then we do the chart again. <coughs> so uh, sulfur oxygen. So the mass is 32 gram and here is 32 gram as well. Okay. So the number of mole this one is mass over molar mass of sulfur which is 32 and the molar mass of oxygen is actually 16 so here you get a ratio of 1 to 2 so you get SO2 simple as that alright so number 4 perhaps we could use a whiteboard in a reaction to make manganese from manganese oxide the following results were obtained 17, uh, 174 gram of manganese oxide produce 110 gram of manganese find its empirical formula alright so 174 gram of manganese oxide okay I do not know the formula yet so I put MNX or Y okay let's check it out again produce 110 gram of manganese 110 gram of manganese alright so that will be 110 gram of manganese. So I believe that oxygen would have a mass of 64 gram. How do I get 64 from? 64 is from 174 minus 110. You get 64. Alright. So you must be able to read the question carefully because they do not give direct answers. So with this in my one O and sixty four, let's check it out. The molar mass of manganese, right? The molar mass of manganese, we get it from here, is fifty five, right? The molar mass of manganese is fifty five. So we go back here. So you can do a chart. So manganese, oxygen, one one O. 64 so we could find the number of mole so that would be 110 divided by 55 so we get 2 mole alright the next thing is uh, we find the mole for oxygen number of mole 64 molar mass 16 so we get 4 Formal. Okay, so the ratio is 2 4, so ratio 2 4 should be 1 2, so you have MnO2. So that's the answer for this question. Let's move along with question number 5. 27 gram of aluminium burns in a stream of chlorine to form 133.5 gram of aluminium chloride. Find its empirical formula. Again, this is a case of reading the question carefully. Aluminium chloride, aluminium and chlorine. So the mass is 27 gram here. And how am I supposed to find the mass of chlorine? The mass of chlorine would be 133.5 minus 27. Okay, 133.5 minus 27. So you get 106.5. 106.5 gram. So the number of mole, you can find it as number of mole 27 over. Aluminium has the molar mass of 27 as far as I remember. So you get one mole. And then here the number of mole is uh, 106.5 gram divided by 35.5 because that's the molar mass for chlorine. Alright. So you'll be able to get 3 more. Okay, so this 3 more and 1 more here. So now we know that the empirical formula could be in the form of this. 
when they ask for empirical formula, they ask asking for this. Not numbers, but rather a formula with some numbers. ALCL3. Okay? One, we don't really have to write one all the time. Let's move on with question six. Now, this hydrocarbon A and B both contains 85.7 carbon. The molar masses of A and B are 42 gram per mole and 84 gram per mole. What are these two elements that are present in the hydrocarbon? Well, the word itself has indicated to us that this compound could contain hydrogen and carbon for both. Right? So now, uh, you need to do this question separately for A and B. For A, you will have uh, carbon and hydrogen. Carbon, you have 85.7 gram because even though it's a percentage, I can assume there is 100 gram of them. So I can just change it to, to grams. And the percentage of hydrogen, you can use 100% minus 85.7%. So that will give you 14.3% or gram. So you need to find the number of mole. 85.7 divided by 12. And this one is a 14.3 divided by 1 is just 14.3. And 85.7 divided by 12. That will somehow give you the value of 7.14. 7.14. The look of it tells you that this uh, ratio is 714, so it's 1, 2. So it should be having the empirical formula of CH2. Do you realize that the same can be said for B because carbon, hydrogen, and uh, 85.7 gram, 14.3 gram, and the number of mole you still get the same. So what's the difference in this? You will see later. Now I just want to tell you first. It's the same things that you wrote. And B also has the empirical formula CH2. Now you look at the arrow that I'm going to draw for you. Look at this one. And you look at this one. You see, if I... If I calculate this, all right, I use a different color. Use uh, this color. If I calculate from here, the relative uh, molecular mass, that will be twelve plus two times one, can only give you fourteen gram per mole. But what makes it forty-two? What's the relationship between fourteen and forty-two? The relationship between fourteen and forty-two is times three. Okay, so when you multiply by three, you are actually getting the molecular formula of A. Okay, let's let's uh, use a whiteboard, All right? So we have A, we have B, we have CH two. I found out the ratio is CH two, CH two, and then here is forty two gram per mole given in the question. And then this 84 gram per mole, given in the question. But since our calculation shows that we can only get 14, how? The molar mass, we can only get 12 plus 12, 2 times 1. So th isn't that 14 gram per mole? So when compared to 42, the actual one is 42. So what's the relationship? Times 3. So when times 3, your CH2 should be multiplied by 3 as well. So your molecular formula is C3H6. If you don't believe, you can calculate again. 3 times 12 plus 6 times 1. So would you get 42? Yes, it will. The same thing for 84. How does 14 gram per mole, how do I get 14? Because 12 plus 2 to 14 gram per mole. So how do you compare 14 and 84? Is it uh, 6? Yeah, it is 6. 6. So, do you think that the formula, molecular formula, should be C6H12? Yes, it is. If you don't believe, you can calculate. 6 times 12, 72. 72 plus 12 is 84. 
right? 